And joining us right now, the Rothman Orthopedics guest line, our good friend from Inside the Birds podcast that he does with our other friend, Adam Kaplan. Jeff Mosher joins the show. What's up, Mosh? What's up, man? You're two for two on Friends at Inside the Birds. Nice job. <laughs> two for t- Although I may have a falling out with Kaplan. I'm not sure. No. Um, it's great <laughs> to have you on. The last time we spoke, we recorded an interview. And then literally the next day when the interview aired, I went and had a kid. So uh, I appreciate the good luck you bestowed upon me. <laughs> you work quickly. There you go. <laughs> Magic. Magic. Uh, no, man, it's great to catch up with you. I can't imagine... Like, obviously, on this show, we cover the whole gambit, right? As they say, the whole gambit. But, like, when you're a football-centric show and a football-centric podcast, I can't imagine what draft draft week is like for you. What is it like for you? Hmm. What is draft week? It, it, it doesn't really feel like a week, right? Because it starts Thursday. So, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The, it's just a lot of phone calls. It's a lot of planning. But it's also kind of the culmination of um, really a month and a half, four, five, six weeks of like a whole lot of maybes, what could be, you know, a lot. A, we get a lot of information at the combine, Mark, but then you go right into free agency. And then a lot of times I don't I don't really even like to do a, to- a lot of draft prep until the pro days are done. And then you got Ooh. the visits after that. So it's hard to get in touch with people until. Um, they've done their meetings with their teams and everything. And that's when you really get a sense. But by then it's like, oh my God, the draft is in two days. So you have like a lot of information that you got to parse through in a small amount of time. Yeah. That, like studying for a final is, is, is kind of what I'll liken it to when I do my own crash course. Yeah, let's I'm, go with that. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm I like you. It like, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like you in that it, everything is so fluid. It's like you have to wait to, like, I hate to say it, but you have to wait to the last minute to really understand, okay, who really has a good opportunity to go to the Eagles? Who really has a good opportunity to maybe go to the Giants or the Cowboys or wherever it may be? So I'm right there with you in that this thing changes so fluidly. Um, And and this draft especially, I mean, forget about it because, you know, uh, you'll talk to people from teams and they're asking you, like, hey, who, 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 how's this board going to shake out in the top four? What are you hearing? And usually – you know, because of quarterbacks, right, or or franchise left tackles or franchise defensive ends, it's pretty set in stone when you're going into Thursday night. You get a pretty decent idea of the first three or four picks. But mm. honestly, I, there's a lot that could happen that can change the boards radically, um, you know, from from basically from one down to, to 20 to wherever, you know. Mm. There's a lot, a lot of variables. Uh, when it comes to the, some of the, the the bigger name guys in this draft, quarterback wise, Kenny Pickett, Willis, or Malik Willis, those guys, all those guys, how do you think they still shape out? Do you still think Pickett is the number one rated guy, the number one rated quarterback? Do you think it's changed at all as time has gone on, or have they stayed pretty much the same? All right, so I'm of the mindset. I'm just using logic here. I think a lot of people would agree that when you're the New Orleans Saints and you trade a future first round pick, in this case to the Eagles that you don't do that to get yourself two first round picks so that you can go take a safety, right? Mm-hmm. And you do that to take a quarterback. Sure. So right now they have those two first round picks and I'm sort of of the mindset that they did that to package them and move up to get a quarterback for the saints. I can see them going with Kenny Pickett. I, you know, I think that that they need a quarterback for the future. Um, they can't sit around and wait. And since they already gave up next year's first rounder, you know they're not waiting around next year to get their their quarterback. Sure. sure. Now, could they could they take Malik Willis instead? I, I, anything can happen, right? Uh, to me, the the guys who are if the quarterbacks who are probably going to go in top twenty are going to be Pickett and Willis. I look at the Seahawks just because I and I'm I'm not saying this because they had Russell Wilson. I don't want people to think oh you're you're you know typecasting or anything. The Seahawks like to run the ball. Pete Carroll has always liked to run the ball and build a strong defense. When you do that, right, you, you'll you'll take a quarterback like Malik Willis, who you, who's a quote-unquote project, got more development to do because you know you can support him with a running game, a defense, and two pretty good wide receivers for that strong arm that he's got. So I can see Malik Willis being a more natural fit for the Seahawks um, if they're to take a quarterback. And I'm also kind of thinking that if you're the Saints, you, you probably have to trade up into that like seven, eight, nine area to leapfrog mm-hmm. C- Seattle just to make sure you get your guy if Kenny Pickett's your guy there. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to the Eagles, do you get any sense from them that they are eyeing a quarterback in the first round? 
Oh yeah, Howie just called me today and he said, <laughs> "Yeah, no, <laughs> um, I don't. I really don't." And um, but I'll I'll couch this as saying that the Eagles tell you time and again with their words and their actions that they're not afraid to be bold and different when it comes to the quarterback position. So I never slam the door on it, but I don't, I'm not sensing it. I don't feel like that's where they're going. I think they've been kind of honest almost to a fault about their, how they're building right now. Um, not just necessarily around Jalen Hurts, but how they're satisfied in, in getting two good players right now, if that's what it is. So I know mm -hmm. some people are thinking, Hey, are they going to package these two picks and jump right up there into the top five, top eight, get that, you know, whether it's a Thibodeau or a sauce gardener and, um, I don't know that they're going to be willing to do that. You know, I mean, that's that's sort of then going against what they – I'm not saying that, they're, that you, you rule out trade up. Um, I'm just saying, like, this whole, like, swing for the fences mentality, I'm not sure that they're – that's that's not the vibe that I'm sensing with them right now. So, no, I don't see them taking a quarterback in the first round. Okay. Uh, yeah, I still think they'll take one later on, take the flyer on the guy, see if it works out, whatever. Oh, might shoot. Be. They might take like three quarterbacks, <laughs> and by, two, three, and four, and kind of try to sell you on how this is the way now you t you draft quarterbacks. You, you throw darts and draft five of them and hope that one is good. <laughs> I mean, stop me if you've heard this before, but I think I've just coined this quarterback factory. Oh, uh, uh, it's catchy. Man, why did I think of that one? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I literally just had uh, not an argument. I corrected a guy on Twitter who said that Philly Special's real name was Philly Philly, and I was like, "No, Nick Foles." Like the things we'll argue about, the little nitpick things, but whatever. Um, wait, wait, you lost me. At, I had to correct somebody on Twitter. Yeah, right, I, uh, that's, <laughs> like I don't, I don't argue on Twitter, Jeff. I just correct people. You know what I'm saying? That's how sure. I look at it. It's like I don't argue with my wife. I just correct her. See how that goes. All right. Uh, <laughs> Now, when it comes to uh, Howie Roseman and the philosophy and all that, it's going to be very competitive in the attempt to move up. So let's just live in a world for a second where they stay at 15 and 18 in this draft in the first round, and they take who? Who is the guy or, or guys in your mind are the best fits for this Eagles team, offense or defense, what have you? All right, Mark. The the, the major To answer this question the best I can, right? Because, again, it, without knowing sort of how this board's going to shake out and all the sure. surprises, it's hard, right? But – my sense and my homework tells me that we're going to look at three positions here in the first round. Defensive line, wide Ooh. receiver, cornerback. Oh. When I say D-line, pass rusher or, or D-tackle, right? Yeah, yeah right. defensive okay. line, wide sure. receiver, quarterback. I'm, I'm sorry, cornerback. That, that, anything other than that would, would, would sort of surprise me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we know the Eagles love offensive linemen and they value it. And I suppose if the board – falls very oddly and all these pass rushers and all these corners and um and wide receivers are gone in the first 14 and like even neil is there well of course they're gonna run to the podium and take like the best left tackle or, or best tackle in the draft something like mm -hmm. that but i really do think those three uh positions are the ones you look at and then who's there at 15 you know i is trent Dup mcduffie there from washington the corner he's a good player is jordan davis there Obviously, the defensive lineman. Um, that is a guy you could definitely see them taking. Um, Jermaine Johnson, the pass rusher from Florida State. That's a guy that they've shown interest in uh, throughout the pre-draft process. The, the question I would have for them is because they allow analytics to be so heavily involved in their draft process, which is not something a lot of NFL teams do, even ones that like analytics. They try to separate it from, say, game day calling to draft. But the Eagles, we know – are into it. Some of these guys don't check off the athletic boxes, but they're really good football players. Like McDuffie, it checks off every single box. He's probably the safest outside of Sauce Gardner cornerback to take in the draft, but he's got short arms, like more short than you would like. So that's not a great thing for your outside cornerback in a league of 6'1, 6'2, 6'3 wide receivers to have short arms, right? But he's a really good football player who checks off all the boxes. So does, there, does that cause like a little, you know, personnel versus analytics thing going on in the front? I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. But same thing with Jordan Davis. This is a guy who doesn't – who who analytically is amazing. I'm sure the analytics people are like, oh, my God, he runs like – look look what he runs at that weight, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the big red flag on him, though, is the weight has fluctuated. He was over 360 at Georgia. Then all of a sudden, combine comes around, and he's like 25 pounds lighter 
and he looks like a superhuman being going through athletic drills. And he didn't rush the passer at Georgia on third down. Most people I speak to, they don't, they're not as concerned with that as they are with the weight. They think he will be a game changer on the defensive line. So if he's there at 15, I have to think that the Eagles are going to think real hard about that, you know? Mm, mm. Literally number one guy on my list. I'm not even kidding you. Almost the, hey, that I, be, I, I know I, last year you wanted Devontae Smith very bad. I did. I you that. did. Damn right I did. Absolutely. So maybe they go double dip for just for you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'll tell you one point one person that's already hit on some news here, and that's uh the report you gave a couple of weeks ago regarding Jalen Rager. Where are we right now? Are our team still banging on the door for Jalen Rager? What's going on there? So j just to be clear, because sometimes <laughs> yeah. you report something and then it kind of gets distorted. What I yes. reported was that there were teams that had called the Eagles to find out, hey, what's the deal with Jalen Rager, right? Because at, and at that time, this is a couple of weeks ago, right? There's like two teams. There's two types of players you're going to call about right now. Guys who are first round picks like Jalen, who maybe have struggled, need a new change of scenery. Is that team trying to unload him? Or the other guy who's been really good for three years, like a Debo Samuel or a DK Metcalf. And for some reason, the league notices that guy hasn't have a co contract extension yet. AJ Brown, same thing, right? So then you get the phone call. So these were, to my, as my understanding, kind of exploratory phone calls. So I don't want to make it seem like they were out there shopping Jalen Rager or anything like that. It's not what I heard. I just heard the teams had picked up a call about Jalen Rager. Now, Mark, if the Eagles draft a wide receiver, which we all think they're going to do, I mean, you can do the math, right? You, you've got a drafted wide receiver. You've got Devontae Smith. You have Quez Watkins, and they signed Zach Pascoe. So that's four guys already. Now, if Jalen Rager is your fifth receiver, he's not your fifth receiver. He's not your on your team, right? right. The, yeah. the, the optics of that are terrible. The economics don't make any sense of it. Um, so, and it's not, it's not good for the Eagles or for the player. So it sure seems like it, it, he's on his way out as long as if the Eagles bring in another wide receiver. No, I would, I would absolutely agree with that. How, how sold are you on the idea? Again, it all depends on how the draft falls. I, I, I would be shocked almost like literally I'd be shocked if the Eagles did jump at a wide receiver in the first round only You'd because be okay. I would be because. You just got Devontae Smith. You, you whiffed on Rager. You took all the heat for that. You just moved another wide receiver to tight end because that was a bad draft selection as well. Like, I feel like it's almost Devontae Smith. All right, let's quit while we're ahead now. One in a row. One in a row. Like, that's kind of how I feel Howie Roseman might approach it uh, for this particular draft. But, hey, man, you do a hell of a lot more homework than I do on this. So I will, I will bow to you for that one. No, um, I, I, I think you shouldn't be shocked. And I mean, I think you'd actually, you should appreciate it if they do, because to me, that's an indication that they stay true to their board, right? Because for every okay. reason you just mentioned, it gives a, like, you could even say, oh, it's a tie. Let's go with the pass rusher. If it's a, or if this, the wide receiver is just a little bit ahead of the corner, let's take the corner because of our history of wide receiver. No, you take the best player on your board. And, and again, the Eagles have given you the answers to the test. They tried to get Calvin Ridley. They we as we reported, they were in on Alvin Robinson. They Alan Alan Robinson. They just did not get him. They had some interest in Christian Kirk, but nobody other than the the Jaguars were going to blow him away with twenty million dollars a year. They've brought guys in uh, like Traylon Burks. They led his workout. You know, Aaron Moore had led his workout. So they've put a lot of work and time in to wide receiver, and I don't think they're doing that just to uh, you know pretend to the rest of the league that they're interested in wide receivers. I think they are. <laughs> Um, and there's a chance a guy like, well, you asked me to mention some guys, like if Drake London is there at 15, I would keep my eyes on a, a receiver who is a big bodied natural X receiver. They've got a lot of these twitchy guys like Devonte Smith and Quez Watkins. They've got speed guys. Um, and with the way Jalen Rager, uh, Jalen, um, hurts tends to play the position, you know, bigger, bigger, the better, you know, a mm -hmm. little bit more catch radius. Um, sure. and a guy like Drake London would be that that kind of guy because he's six foot three and he has an amazing catch radius. Um, you know, Garrett Wilson is a, Garrett Wilson is more the twitchy guy, uh, but if he fell to fifteen, you just basically say that's one of the best players in the draft. I'm just going to take him because he's that good. Okay, all right, I'm 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 for it. If if they're there, let's yeah, let's party. Sure. Can you write uh, down the Mark Farzetta wish list so I can pass <laughs> that on to certain people? And yes, of course. See if we can do that to you for two years in a row. Literally, right. <laughs> literally, uh, Jordan Davis, Devin Lloyd. I like uh, I like uh, Devin even. Lloyd. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a linebacker. It's never going to happen in a million years, but it's my oh, wish list. Damn it. 
Yeah, uh, well, you know, one out of two ain't bad, brother. <laughs> one eighty two ain't bad. I do like Stingley though, the LSU corner. I uh, well, I yeah, like him. So here's the fascinating thing. I, again, I my sense, my vibe is that Howie's not going to try to swing for the fences and right. package like two. No. But let's say Derek Stingley is a guy who's available in that. 9 10 11 range and from 15 to 9 10 11 is not giving up both first round picks it's not mm-hmm. even giving up a second probably a third which they have two of gets you that that to me is more realistic in what the eagles would possibly do right if they want to if that right type of guy fell there party all right i'm with you on there i'm with you on that one um just real quick any update on Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, any idea he, if he can still come to Philadelphia? They're still kicking tires. Debo Samuel is still, still too expensive. Any of those names that are still hot that are still out there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's fascinating that that Honey Badger has allowed himself, you know, not to t- accept a deal with the draft here. And there are some pretty good safeties in this draft. There's about five or six safeties that I really like, which means, of course, the Eagles won't take any of them because, you know, When's the last time the Eagles actually drafted a safety? Of, did one of them the go, first, second, did, or third round? Did one of them go to Penn State? Uh, listen, listen. Uh, if you're accusing me of bias, <laughs> not at all. Way, no, way no. correct. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I mean, uh, it's as the way I understand it. And he he even had an interview with I don't know if you saw the interview he did with um, the Kansas City writer recently when when in, they were in New Orleans together, and he basically said I would have taken the deal that they gave. Um, that they wound up giving to Justin Reed. That deal was three years, thirty-nine million. And Teron Matthew was like said in the article, "I would have settled for it." So that tells you where his mindset is right now. Three thirteen million a year for three years is quote settling right now. But no one's given them that obviously, or he'd be taking that. So I, I said, if he, if he's willing to take a one-year deal, I think the Eagles get back into the conversation, okay. right? Um, but two years or more money, I, I you know, I, I, that's my sense is that the Eagles are not there multiple gotcha. years. Gotcha. Uh, Jeff Mosher, Inside the Birds podcast. What can we look forward to when it comes to draft coverage with Inside the Birds? Well, we got it. We already have our Inside the Birds uh, annual mock draft up. It's on um, our podcast platform. It's also on our website, uh, InsideTheBirds.com. And uh, Adam and I will have a lot of coverage we'll, um, from our both podcast and YouTube channel, Inside the Birds YouTube, uh, on the, the, the three days of the draft. We'll have comprehensive pre- and post-draft uh, coverage. Awesome. And uh, you this is officially you're doing this interview with me. We're, you were taping this after your uh, your eldest daughter just won a softball game. Is that correct? That is correct. She and won it herself. It's amazing. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, but she she did, told she everyone else to well. sit down, sit down. All right. Good. She, she did play well. She did play well as, as you know, somehow she's got some athletic talents. I tried to, my best through genetics not to pass them on, but apparently it, she's a pretty good athlete. So good for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Jeff Mosher, Inside the Birds podcast. So great catch up with him, my friend. Uh, good luck to you and Adam Kaplan all throughout the rest of draft week and draft weekend and all that fun stuff. Mosh, always a pleasure, my friend. Appreciate it, brother. Have a great one. You as well. Jeff Mosher joining us on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line.